Hey, and welcome to Dirty Lazy Girl, a podcast that offers realistic girlfriend support and problem solving for imperfect people. You don't have to be perfect to be successful. Every week, we'll give you unconventional, dirty, or lazy problem solving strategies. Let's get started. Well, it is season three of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. And today's obstacle is prioritizing your needs, giving yourself permission to be first. And I'm so bad at this, Stephanie, because I, you know, was taught that a good girl is not selfish and she puts others before herself. And guess what? That doesn't work out so well for me. <laughs> you know, if you're going to, I've learned if you're going to be successful, whether it's weight loss or at work or raising children, you have to put yourself first. You have to prioritize yourself or stuff just doesn't get done and you fall apart and you're resentful. <laughs> So how do we do that? And that's always the struggle is how do I put myself first? Well, I think what we're going to do today will help some of us, like people like me, who kind of feel like I need permission to put myself first. So today we're going to give some permission slips. <laughs> so these will help you put you yourself on a path that really puts you, you as a priority. I hear that. Um, during my la uh, during my weight loss journey, Tamara, um, losing 140 pounds, I really did learn that lesson of trying to take care of everyone around me. It would just have this horrible impact on my eating. I mean, let's be honest. I tend to overeat when I'm upset. I do. I'll just say it. Um, and I spent so much of my life just eating for comfort. And that's been a challenge for me to really deal with that. Um, learning to speak up has helped me definitely. And giving myself, like you said, permission to put myself first. Um, it really, really, really helped me with my overeating, but it didn't happen overnight. That's for darn sure. That's um, right. So as I practice these prioritizing strategies that we're going to share today and expressing my feelings, I really was able to let go a lot of um, those unwanted eating habits. And so for me, uh, giving myself permission to have a voice really made a huge impact in my ability to lose weight. And we have seven permission slips we're going to give you today <laughs> so you can become happier and healthier. So let's dive in, Stephanie. I love it. Well, I love this whole concept of permission slips because it just, it's like freeing, isn't it? Yeah. You can even write it down, like put it on a piece of paper with it written on, which you can write our first one. And the first Which one is, is to give yourself permission to take a break. Right. <laughs> and I, I'm i one of those, like, if I don't feel like I'm checking off the to-do list and constantly moving, constantly going, I'm somehow lazy and unproductive. But we all know, like, being overwhelmed and overworked actually makes us less productive. So I think we need to give ourselves a permission to to take a break. And I'd say build it into your day. Like, if you know, take a half an hour, an hour, wh whatever you can. And you'll think you can't, but you can. You can just plan it in there like you plan everything else, your exercise, your work, homework, whatever. Um, put it on there and take that rest because ultimately you can't be what you need to be for work, for home, whatever, without it. Well, I really like this strategy you're suggesting about giving myself permission to take a break because mm -hmm. as I've shared many times, my husband and I work all weekend on Dirty Lazy Keto stuff. It's our second job or third job. Um, even if we're on vacation, you know, we're both plugging away on our phones, our computers, and we're trying to keep up with just everything. And don't get me wrong. We absolutely love it. Um, love it. Love it. It's my absolute passion in life. Um, but here's the thing though. My husband will go ahead and take a day off after that weekend's over. And after all that work is done, he will take a total day off, give himself permission, like you said, to take a break. And then you know what happens to me, Tamara? <laughs> I, I get very upset and I get resentful and I get angry. He's not doing chores. I just got done working like a triple day. And then all of a sudden I got mad. And then I was like, wait a minute. If he can take a day off, why can't I take a day off? Right. It was like this huge aha. Like you suggested this to me. You're like, well, give yourself permission to take a day off. He's doing yeah. a great job. Don't get mad at him. Look at yeah. yourself and say, why can't you take Monday, Tuesday, any day of the week, you know, any time. It doesn't have to be a specific schedule, but mm -hmm. I can give myself that time off, right? 
You can. And you may run into some resistance, you know, and resentments for it, but you have to fight for yourself. I know <laughs> you, oh, yeah. you have to fight for yourself because you, it, that's why we're giving you permission because I think sometimes you don't want to fight for yourself. You're like, oh, okay. You know, you're a right? mar martyr once again. I know. And it's like, no, fight for your right to have a break. You have a right to have a break. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> Dang it. If someone else is taking a day off from chores, I can do the same thing. It doesn't have to be exactly. the same day, but it can be when I feel like it's appropriate for me. Yeah. So great strategy. I agree. Okay. Number two, the second permission slip is to remove toxic people from your life. Cut them. Yeah. This one's Cut a em. hard lesson for me. I mean, I just recently, I have a relative, I won't mention names, but they're a kind of a mean person. You know, they say nasty things. And my strategy was, oh, I'll just ignore them rather than like cut them out. But you know, Stephanie, it was awful. My daughter came up to me and said, oh, that same person was doing it to her. And I was like, I felt terrible. And I, I, it just dawned on me, I'm like, I should have just cut that person out. Like, why haven't I cut them out? Because now it's not just me. Now my daughter has to put up with it. <laughs> so I'm going to be a good role model for her and, and cut them out. Like, don't, if they're at these functions, I don't have to go. No, you don't. Well, this one can be tough, right? Because it's yeah. a toxic person. That's a family member. It's not so easy to cut out people that are permanently attached to you. It could be a boss. It could be, like you said, a family member. So I get it. I mean not going or cutting them out, that can be a first strategy, but sometimes you have to have that plan B. And yeah. for me, I mean, what I've kind of done, Tamara, is if I can't cut them out, like you said, sometimes you can, mm -hmm. sometimes you can't. Um, I've tried to make a backup plan and a very strategic plan for that person. And so I've planned to be in control of how I react to them. So for me, what's been working is when they start doing that nasty stuff and the terrible commenting to me or to anyone, I just either, I plan to ignore them, use humor, um, feel sorry for them. That works for me. Change yeah. the subject, hang up the phone, or just completely change proximity. And I know that yeah. doesn't always work, but. Yeah. And you're giving yourself permission by planning in advance. Oh, okay. If they come up to me, I'm going to do this. Or if they bring this subject up, I'm going to do that. And it's giving yourself permission in ahead of time to say, I don't yeah. have to deal with it. I can walk yeah. away or do something else. And every person gets a specific strategy, I feel like. Yeah. You can't cut everybody, but I have one person in particular I'm kind of thinking of who's always nasty consistently now for years, like at least a decade. So I use the strategy of feeling sorry for her. I can't cut yeah. her because she's someone yeah. I have to deal with. So yeah. I just feel sorry for her. When she goes down yeah. that path and she's nasty or critical, I go, yeah. wow, that's sad that, you know, I don't say this out loud. <laughs> yeah. no. right? But in my yeah. head, I'm like, that's really sad that she has to belittle me yeah. and make fun of the way I eat and criticize yeah. my choices in order to feel yeah. good about herself. Yeah. And then I go. Yeah. yeah, I know. And I have a similar strategy too. Now that, now that you say that it's more, um, the conversation I have is it's their problem, not mine. Like if they're nasty, it's because they're struggling with whatever insecurities, you know? So I just repeat that. It's not about me. It's about them. <laughs> I love bingo. it. It's about ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good one. Well, these tips are great. So, but before we keep going, I think we should stop right here and take a quick break. Okay. Well, thank you, Tamara. I just want to point out the fact, I know I mentioned earlier about me being an overeater and a big eater. So that probably hasn't gone away entirely, even though I'm working on it. But I want to share with you guys, there's a little trick inside the Dirty Lazy Keto 5-Ingredient Cookbook. Um, there's little icons throughout the recipes that are assigned, and they're kind of like a call-out or recommendation. Think of it as me trying to say, hey, this would be good for that. And whenever you see the little blue icon next to a recipe, that means I'm recommending it for people that are big eaters like me. So... I'll show you what I'm talking about here in the table of contents. You can see all the little symbols next to recipes. And each one of those symbols is kind of like a call out for a certain type of behavior or an audience that it might be recommended for. And the blue bowl icon is for the big eaters like me. <laughs> kind of embarrassing, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Well, thank you, Stephanie. 
Okay, we had number one and number two, and our third permission slip is we're going to give you permission to be who you really are. Ooh, this sounds empowering. I, it is. I mean, you know, I feel like, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a professor at heart. I'm pretty much a nerd. <laughs> And my kids make fun of me because when I'm trying to be hip and cool, and I, I've decided, you know, I just need to embrace that that's who I am. I like books. I like Star Wars. <laughs> I like, you know, nerdy, weird puzzles and crocheting. I mean, it's just who I am. So why try to be, you know, an Instagram model? That's not who I am. <laughs> and embrace them. So it's it feels good to have permission to just you know, embrace the weird, embrace your weirdness. Yeah. Just be you. Cause yeah. I think that's what makes you so special, Tamara. So I hope that you <laughs> don't let go of those things. Yeah. That's, that's what I find most endearing about you is your charm yeah. and specialness. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Tamara, you know, my weird idiosyncrasy that I'll <laughs> about to share. This is not something I've hide, hidden very well, but I tend to go like completely overboard and everything I do this has been going on since I was born. And if I find anything that gets me excited, I tend to jump right in before even really thinking about it. My interests definitely have become obsessive. Um, and there are people in my life that get really irritated by this or they feel resentful because I'm so engaged in you know, a new passion or a new topic. Some people have been wanting to fix me or maybe change that part of my personality, telling me, oh, you know, you shouldn't be so into that. You need to be more balanced or whatever. Whatever. I mean, I've struggled with this. I still can I still continue to struggle with this. You know, I worry a lot like, oh, maybe they're right. You know, maybe I shouldn't be doing this or that all the time. But here's the thing. This is what I've come up with. Um, kind of like what you said with Star Wars or crocheting or just being you. I mean, I've realized that I can't do things any other way. And when I try... I become very unhappy. So I know there's a cost to my personality going overboard. I know, you know, there's time away from my family, burnout, you know, I might injure myself if I'm like running too much or doing different activities too much, but I can't do it any other way. And I don't want to. This yeah. doesn't, yeah, it doesn't appeal to me. I love challenges. I love extremes. I love trying my best and going all in. It makes me feel really alive. So Tamara, I'm going to give myself permission to just be me. You know, it's so funny. It reminded me when we used to go to our walks, this is before you started the, the Facebook support, before you started writing books, but we were kind of talking about it. And I remember you saying, but my writing is in a voice that's, you know, I make jokes, I say, you know, scientifical, <laughs> you know, I, I speak in a language that's very much me. And I, and I was like, well, then go with that. Like, don't try to be some other kind of author or, you know, be your crazy self. <laughs> because honestly, you trying to be something else, it just comes off inauthentic anyway. So you did and you went for it, even though you were like, I don't know if these publishers are going to like my crazy style of writing. But I'm they just going to go for it. This is who I am, and I'm going to own it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's worked out. Yay. <laughs> All right. What's our fourth permission slip? Well, Tamara, this one's kind of fun because I think our readers and listeners will love this, and viewers. I think they will love the fact that we're going to recommend number four, a permission slip to spend money on themselves. Love that. <laughs> Do you like that one? Yes. Show it's me the money. I know. And especially, yeah, <laughs> Ooh. especially on stuff that makes you feel good and that's for your comfort. And that, you know, like for me, I know there's two things I get really cheap about and it, and I don't know why it's shoes and bras. And if, you know, and I have back issues, Stephanie, how dumb is that? A good bra helps with back issues. Good shoes helps with back issues. And yet I go to the store and I, pick the cheapo pair instead of, you know, the really nice ones that'll have a good arch support or whatever, or the, the comfortable, good looking bra. Um, and I got to stop that. I'm telling, I'm giving myself permission to pay over a hundred dollars for a pair of shoes. I mean, I know that like, to me, that just, <laughs> but you know what? I'm worth it. And these aren't like trivial things, right? Like we're not talking 
spend a hundred dollars on, you know, one tiny little something. It's, these are important things. And I have to tell myself, you're worth having comfortable back, you know, and walking and all that. It's funny you mentioned that about the shoes and bras, because I remember earlier we were talking about, you know, upcoming ideas for episodes. And I'm like, we should totally do one on, you know, bras and bra fitting. And both of us were like, well, what would we say? Because we both have <laughs> problems with this issue where we're both wearing like these cheap bras that don't fit. So maybe if there's a listener or a watcher out there who is an expert in bra fitting, you know, get in touch yes. with us because maybe you could help us and be a, a guest on our podcast. You never know. What we a great to- idea. Yeah. Because I'm help people. I mean, I'm terrible at picking out bras. So yeah, I'm worst. sure we have, I'm sure we have some experts out there that could really. So help reach us out. out. We'll be yeah. waiting. <laughs> Awesome. Well, some of our some of our longtime listeners they might they might remember Tamara. I was sharing with you in a really embarrassing story about how when I wrote my first Dirty Lazy Keto book, I was sharing a family computer. So we had one computer that was really old. It was me and my husband, my two kids. We were all fighting over having time to sit down and do our you know anything on the computer. And I would fight to get like 20, 30 minutes here and there. It was so ridiculous. I had no nothing that I needed to do my job. And I feel like I've really come a long way. It's been a you year. Have. I've come a long way. Like it's been a year, Tamara, since you and I did the episode about creating a she shed or a, your own space. And that's when mm-hmm. I took over this little office to be, you know, my own studio. But I've stopped using, you know, dried up whiteboard markers, broken equipment. And I've started to give myself permission to invest in myself invest in the office tools I need to be productive. And I couldn't be happier. It's changed my life. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't believe you were all sharing that computer and it wasn't even a good one. (laughs) No, it was really old and it would crash. And I didn't even think that it was a problem. That's the craziest part. Yeah. Yeah. So you just needed permission to have your own new computer. Hello. (laughs) Hello. And I still do that. Like dumb things. Like I need pens. I need whiteboard pens. Oh, and that my first instinct is to go to my kids and use their old stuff from school. And I'm like, it's all dried up. The caps are missing. I don't have the colors yeah. I need. Just dumb things like that. I I deserve to have, you know, a clipboard if I need one that's legal size, not yeah. letter size with my paper hanging off. Right? Yes. <laughs> Stupid things. I think I've been suffering. I know. I, yeah. I know. It's a big one. I've been going around with my, I broke, cracked my iPhone screen and I was going around for weeks and my husband's like, go get it fixed. (laughs) My eyes are strained, (gasps) but I just getting cheap. Like I know. (laughs) know. (laughs) And it was just being cheap. Like, just like, Mm -hmm. oh, I broke it. Maybe even punishing myself a little bit. Right. You know? So yeah, we got to do that. Number four. It's a big one. Give yourself yeah. permission to spend a little money on the things that you need, whether it's a bra, a pair of shoes, office equipment, you figure out what it is that's important for you yeah. and give yourself permission to spend a little money there. Yeah, I agree. And that leads us into number five, which is a permission slip to forgive yourself. If you know, like with the iPhone, you know, I mm-hmm. cracked it. It happens. Why am I beating myself up and making myself look at the crack screen? You know, forgive myself. Yeah, it's an accident. Although I have heard, Tamara, that you've broken quite a few laptops. (laughs) And iPhones. I'm kind of known for it, sadly. (laughs) But go ahead and forgive yourself. Right. Oh, my goodness. I'm so bad. Well, Tamara, one of the things I do in terms of not forgiving myself is I will replay a conversation or a scenario over and over again in my mind, like, like a crazy person, you know what I mean? I'll kind of obsess about it. I'll get myself all worked up about what I should have said or could have said, but it's really taken me a while to realize this. But I think in that situation where I'm kind of mad at myself for not doing or saying the right thing, I need to just stop and feel the feelings, feel that it's uncomfortable and forgive myself for whatever I did say or didn't say. And just sit with it. I don't need necessarily to fix everything. I don't have to call that person or, you know, write them an email. I just need to feel the frustration, the anger, the sadness, the disappointment. So I'm going to give myself permission to sit with uncomfortable feelings as opposed to taking action. 
That's really good. I, I need to, too. I, and I think it, it makes me feel like I need to be more patient with myself. Like, I'm not going to be perfect. I mean, yeah, I'm going to, like, for me, I, I was getting mad at myself for not standing up more for myself or being too much of a people pleaser. Those are the issues I'm working on. But I'm not going to be perfect at it overnight. Like, and I, so yeah, when I get, when I'm dwelling like that and playing it over, I just have to say, be patient. You're, you know, you've come a long way. You've made a lot of progress. You know, it's just going to keep, it's going to keep happening. <laughs> just forgive yourself and move on. It's hard, but it is. Yeah. yeah. We all tend to ruminate. Yeah, we do. And punish ourselves. Or I mm -hmm. do. Yeah. yeah. And go in the spinning circle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, number six, friends, we want to recommend that everybody writes a permission slip to receive from others. And we're talking kind of about gifts here, right? Yeah. Gifts, yeah. actions, nice things. Yeah. Yes. Do you I, do well with I'm, that one? Yeah. Oh, I'm bad. And the one example I have is you know, probably when I needed help the most was after I had my children. And I remember people would say, oh, we'll babysit or let us um, do your laundry. Let us, you know, help you clean the house or, you know, what, let me bring over dinner. And I would just say, no, 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 no. And I didn't accept any help. I know, Stephanie, what was wrong with me? <laughs> you know, and I was overwhelmed. I was exhausted. I was sleep deprived. And I'm looking back and if I had taken that help, I would have been much a better mom. Like I would have been more rested and, you know, not as overwhelmed. And, you know, I think I just, maybe it's because I think I'm superwoman and to be a mom, I had to do everything myself. And I just, you know, so I needed permission to say, no, you don't have to cook the dinner and change the diaper and look beautiful and do your work. <laughs> so I love that, Tamara. I was kind of interpreting number six, the permission slip to receive from others. I was trying to kind of think of that in a different way from actions. I was thinking of it more in terms of gifts, like a physical gift. So the story I came up with is I just got a gift in the mail the other day from a potential uh, Dirty Lazy Keto sponsor. It's totally out of the blue. And they sent me this amazing gift, like full of their business products. And at first, Tamara, I thought, it, I felt really weird. I was like, I didn't ask for this. Like, I didn't order this. And it was fancy. There was all this cool stuff in there. My kids, my husband, everyone's like digging it apart. Like, woo, you know what I mean? Like, woo, like I want to try this and try that. All these different products. But I was so worried that if I kept it, it would somehow, I don't know, like compromise my integrity. I was worried if I accepted it, they would think something, that there was some kind of relationship going on or I, I owed them. Um, and so I, I kind of struggled with this one. And my husband's like, just because you they send you a gift doesn't mean you're, you know, recommending their product. You have the right to decide and evaluate the product and use it and try it out. And if you choose to say it on a podcast or choose to say it on Instagram, that's my choice. And I would do that on my own merit. So I really had to kind of think about that. And I wrote them a letter. I said, thank you for this, you know, wonderful gift. I can't wait to try out your product. And then I'll go from there. So I'm not going to turn away yeah. a fancy gift. So sponsors, feel free. <laughs> feel free. I'm <laughs> announcing it here on the Dirty Lazy right. Girl podcast. Tamara and right. I would, we, would love we, to try out your products. So feel free to send them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, we have permission to we accept things with our permission, permission slip. We do. And it's not, right. we're not saying we're going to, you know, put it on a podcast, but we definitely are willing to yeah. give it a try and check it out. And if we like it, then we will recommend it. And we've done that in the past, right? Like we yeah. used um, yeah. some allulose samples from RX Sugar. We've recommended enlightened ice cream cones. So we'll, we'll do that if we like your product, mm -hmm. but it's okay. You can send it to us. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny that you didn't just dive right into it and just be like, no. yes. <laughs> I felt yeah. really weird. Yeah. I was totally like, I didn't order this. This is so nice. It was just like a bunch yeah. of product samples from my company, yeah. like for cooking. But still, yeah. I'm all, this is kind of yeah. weird. And that's the risk they take when they send it unsolicited. So, you yeah, know, you could not like it, but that's the risk they take. That's true. Right. That would be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have one more permission slip, and this is to say no to things you don't want to do. <laughs> mm. Do you say no to Sometimes anything? Sometimes I need this one. This oh, one's hard. My well, I 
Oh, and I, you know, I have several charity things and volunteer things I do, but honestly, sometimes it's, it's, it's kind of one of those things that I have to cut out when, when, when my work is overwhelming or my, because my kids and my work take priority and those are great when I have time, but it's hard to say no because they're doing such amazing things. Like we were serving, asked to serve dinner to the homeless. And of course it's like, oh, I feel so bad not doing it, you know, saying no. But at the same time, I, I needed permission to, you know, take care of myself, take care of my family. And then if I have a little time or energy left over, I can, you know, volunteer to feed feed the homeless or whatever the charity that, that comes up. It, but it's, you know, it's a struggle. You know, it's interesting when you talked about that. I could tell you're still struggling with it. Like you kind of yeah. feel guilty even saying it out loud. But this is a hard mm -hmm. one for, for all of us, especially as women. We feel the need to give and give and be there for everyone, take care of our aging parents, be good at work, take care of our kids or spouses. You Right? It's hard to say no to things. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, it really I'm curious is. what permission slips our listeners give to themselves. Can I not Email share us? mine? Tamara oh, doesn't want to hear mine. <laughs> Sorry. She doesn't want to oh hear my God, mine. Oh my God, left you hanging there. Sorry. She she go. <laughs> okay. Well, I just wanted to say, and this one's kind of funny. It's very appropriate for what I just did. Is that um, like learning to speak up, saying yes or no to things. I feel like I may have gone overboard, Tamara. I'm, I'm kind of a bossy person, <laughs> which is funny because I just did that to you. But I feel like I'm... Uh, I used to say no to so many people and do every, you know, do what everybody else wanted. Now I can't stop saying no and it's getting myself into trouble sometimes. <laughs> I just want to admit it. So I'm going to work on like being a little bit more uh, political about this one and maybe being um, more aware of the rifts that it caused because it can get me yeah. in trouble when I say no, especially at work to stuff I don't want to do. And I'm like, uh, yeah. no, I'm not doing that. And then people <laughs> look at you like, okay, that's insubordinate. That's not. That's not helpful at all. So I, re I think I, I better work on this one. So I'm going to give myself permission to revisit this topic for improvement. Right. <laughs> That's funny. I think maybe somewhere between you and I is a happy, a happy middle. Yeah, I'm a little bit overboard, Tamara. <laughs> I, I need that, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I'm going to move okay, forward. Sorry. sorry to cut you off. <laughs> I, I really I'm wanted to say that because I wanted you to hold me accountable. Right. It's okay. Been, it's been a problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, I'm curious what permission slips our listeners give themselves. Email us at stephanie at dirtylazyketo.com or leave a comment on YouTube. And if your comment is read on the air during season three, contact Stephanie to receive her prize. So now before we get to our final hacks, let's take a last quick break. Well, it is time for a recipe call out. And today I want to show you my husband's all-time favorite low carb dessert recipe. And this is inside the Dirty Lazy Keto five ingredient cookbook. And it's on page 179. And it is called, oh, this is my husband's favorite. This is called the chili cheesecake bars. I'm gonna try to show it to the camera here. It's a beautiful picture. Mm. Oh, they're so good. And this is just one of the 100 new Ketolicious recipes that you're gonna find inside the fourth cookbook in the series. And it's called the Dirty Lazy Keto Five Ingredient Cookbook. So order your copy today. Thanks, Stephanie. So we can wrap up today by sharing the permission slips we have successfully given ourselves. <laughs> well, mine, Tamara, is a little sticky note that I have um, on my monitor um, where I sit to do all my work. And my little note says to myself, what is your intention today? I just wrote it. What is your intention today? And the simple sentence, the simple permission slip, it has empowered me to make so many changes in my life, all for the better. I feel like life is short and I really want to live every minute with intention and purpose. And I want to do this in line with my personal values. So giving myself that permission slip has really been helpful. Wow. What a great way to start the day. Um, I've given my self a permission slip to ask more from my kids. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Let them be uncomfortable and do extra chores or do things for themselves that I tend to want to jump in and do it for them. Because I think I've associated being a good mom with happy, comfortable kids, but I'm learning that kids actually need to struggle and they need 
you know, they need responsibilities and to learn independence. So I've been working on this one, giving myself permission to let my kids struggle. That is amazing. I think mm -hmm. you could apply that to spouses as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, our big message here today, folks, is that our success in life, it's not going to happen overnight if we don't prioritize ourselves. Empower yourself to improve. Identify what part of prioritizing you are having trouble with and write yourself a permission slip to make a change. And are you enjoying the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast? Show your support by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on YouTube, give the episode a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to the Dirty Lazy Keto channel. Well, we love reading your comments and your reviews, and I want to share something that one of our listeners wrote, and this is from Julie Colin, and she wrote this on YouTube in a public space. And Julie wrote this um, below the episode about top 10 keto diet hacks for busy keto moms and dads. And it, these were tips about making the low carb keto lifestyle long term. It was episode 20 of season three. And here's what Julie wrote. Stephanie, thank you for sharing your keto lessons with us. Listening to tips from yourself and Tamara is pure enjoyment and informative. It's been almost two months in and I found some of it simple to adjust to, but I'm learning as I go. It's not always easy. As this is for the long haul, I am trying to just take one day at a time. I've tried a couple of recipes from your book that has really helped. Keep on inspiring keto newbies. We need you both. Rock on. Aww. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you'll never miss a video, and we'll see you next week.